So the new iPad Pro 2018. The Pro must mean that it's for professionals, right? Well, I'm a creative professional. I'm a stills photographer by trade, a filmmaker, and I also have a background in audio engineering. So let's see just how pro this iPad is and how it works and doesn't for me. So when the new iPad Pro was released with USB-C, I was intrigued. Could, could this be the moment where I could leave my MacBook Pro at home and just use those new powerful iPads? Well, the short answer is no, I really can't. But the long answer, it's a bit more complicated. Well, is leaving your MacBook Pro at home the most important feature of the iPad Pro for creative professionals? Well, I tend to think not, because there are a lot of things that you can do with an iPad that you can't do with a laptop or uh, any other tablet for that matter. But does that warrant the iPad Pro's $1200 plus price tag? Well, for me, absolutely. And here's why. So how do you motivate the iPad Pro's 1300 euro price tag? Well, I basically counted backwards for products that I've had for a while and needed to be replaced. My MacBook Pro is from 2012, my old Wacom board is really really used up and I also had an old iPad that was getting really slow. So a few products that I hope could, you know, brew down to one form factor that is the iPad Pro. and. It did work in very many situations and in others it didn't. So let's take a look at how I use the iPad Pro in my everyday workflow. Check it out. A growing part of my business is drone filming and here the iPad is an invaluable tool for me to use with my DJI Inspire One RAW. That big screen gives me great confidence that I don't miss any details when I'm out filming with my drone. This is something that I can't do with the Surface Pro since the DJI apps don't exist on Windows and there's also some third party apps that allows me to do animation with my Osmo RAW. That is really useful when you want to do stuff like time lapses or you want to do repeatable product shots. With the new USB-C port there are some things that actually work really good. I bought this cheap USB-C dongle with USB-A, HDMI and USB-C for pass-through power. It's also convenient that you can connect other stuff like memory card readers, external hard drives or stuff like this. This audio interface by Zoom, I use this both as a field recorder to record voiceover and, and to, to record music in GarageBand that I can later export to Logic Pro. The next big thing with the new iPad Pro is that redesigned pencil. Now, I'm not an artist by any stretch of the imagination, but I have been a retoucher for many years. I'm a big proponent of using Wacom tablets as they both speed up the workflow and add precision to your retouching. With the addition of the hidden button on the pencil, it gets closer to the Wacoms in a big way. The Astropad app is what I use to turn the iPad Pro into something close to Wacom Cintiq series. It works good for the most part and if you have good Wi-Fi you can actually sit in the comfort of your couch, do your retouching and still leverage the power of your desktop computer. Pretty cool. It does however come with some drawbacks, you can't map that hidden button like I have on my Wacom board set to undo. I can't seem to get the hover function to work, so it's hard to look at my desktop monitor and see where the cursor is. I have to look down on the iPad when I'm doing stuff like tracing. 
The iPad is also a great accessory for both my DSLRs and my Sony FS5, as they come with built-in Wi-Fi. And with the corresponding apps, I can control stuff like shutter speed, ISO, and aperture, as well as get a good solid preview. So I can set up my camera when I'm doing stuff like this. But then again, I can't shoot Tether on the iPad Pro, which I can do on my Surface Pro. My absolute biggest frustration with the new iPad is that I can't shoot tethered with any of my professional cameras, even though we have the new USB port. And from what I've read on the internet, I'm not alone here. So Apple, please unlock this feature. It would be a massive help for all of us shooting professionally or even semi-professionally to be able to do like we've done with our MacBook Pros and for me, my old Surface Pro, to use it as a monitor so I can quickly review what I've shot. Especially for me working as a commercial photographer, it's really useful that I can see what I've shot really quickly and for my clients as well. So get on that Apple, everybody wants that feature. So file management is also done in a real apple way, which means that it's really done backwards. If I stick a memory card that I've gotten off from my Sony cameras or my Canon cameras, I have to go to iPhoto to then import them into Lightroom, which basically leaves me with not using that at all because I still got my MacBook Pro and that workflow just works better and I can quickly back up my camera cards with my old MacBook Pros to external hard drives. So I'm not really using the iPad Pro as much for everyday photography as I want, but there are a lot of other features that I do. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to know, are you considering getting an iPad Pro? How if and if you have one, how are you using it? And what are the features that you are most looking forward to in future iOS updates? If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up, consider sub subscribing to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.